So you recently made history as one of not one, not two, but three black women to take the crown. Yes. Let's talk about it. All right, yeah. <laughs> It's something that I didn't even recognize when I won. I just thought three women won their respective titles. But then once all the news articles started coming out, I thought it was like so interesting because it really shows how far we've come in society and that we really are changing beauty standards. But I think since it, since it is such a topic of discussion in news, it shows how far we have to go until like having three African-American women win isn't such like a big topic in the news. So when it's like our beauty is just normalized. Yeah. Something that I heard you say is that you didn't readily notice that there were three black women with the crown, but you did readily notice that two of them had naturally curly hair. Yes. When did you start wearing your hair natural? I remember only having one photo of me when I was younger with natural hair because ever since I was such a young age, I had my hair chemically straightened. And so I always knew I had naturally curly hair, but I never fully embraced it. I started growing out my hair naturally. I started transitioning. I'd watch a ton of YouTube videos on how to style hair and how to braid. About a year and a half into transitioning, I got the big chop. It was the start of a, a new era for me. And for the people who don't know, the big chop is when we cut most of our hair off mm -hmm. to kind of start fresh with natural hair. Yeah. I know you and I both talked about um, that we're both biracial, um, we both super love our moms, and we both used to wear our hair straight to fit in in our families and to kind of look more like our mothers. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about kind of that desire to look like your mom and have her straight beautiful blonde hair and her being beautiful to you and how it led to you finding her beauty in yourself even with your curly hair? Yeah, so growing up, I always thought my mom was like the most beautiful woman in the entire world. And I wanted to embody the same characteristics as her because she was so strong and powerful. And so I thought I had to do that physically because she was what my image of beauty was. So I'd straighten my hair and I'd stay out for like hours in the sun trying to get my hair to be like um, sun dyed blonde. And uh, it never worked <laughs> because my hair was never going to be as blonde as my mother's. I realize I'm never gonna be fully confident unless I embrace who I truly am, and that's with my curly hair. And that's what gave me confidence, was being able to grow that out and figure out who I am as a person. And the way I did that was through embracing my curly hair and talking to people that also are biracial and have curly hair, and their struggles with growing up with wanting to straighten their hair because that's what they saw as beautiful. When I saw the first images of you with the crown on your curly hair, I immediately thought of that wonderful image that Pete Souza took in the White House of Obama during his presidency. And there's this like cute little black boy who asks, can he touch Obama's hair? He wants to know, is his hair like his own? Mm -hmm. And it's this really iconic moment to young black kids to see someone do something that has never been done before by someone who looks like them. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that crown in your head, I thought, wow, little black girls, little brown girls are going to feel this way about her. I really believe you can't be what you can't see. It always makes me want to be a better version of myself to show these young girls, like you can accomplish so many amazing things and you can do it while having a darker complexion. You can do it while having natural hair. It doesn't matter as long as you are confident being who you are.